Hey, thank you for listening to the Performance Anxiety Podcast on the Pantheon Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mark. And this episode, I talk with Alice Janice and Sean Pony Heath, two friends who would meet on Tuesdays to talk and informally play some music in their living rooms. Those meetings eventually became the band of stars. Alice talks to me about how she grew up a block from the legendary venue Maxwell's in Hoboken, New Jersey. She began her music career playing bass with Gut Bank and Sex Pod, and she eventually met up with Genesis P. Orridge and played bass for Psychic TV for the last 20 years. Sean discusses growing up in Pretoria, South Africa, and how the music scene was the ultimate in DIY, sometimes meaning you had to build your own stage from tires and soil. Alice and Sean had written so much music together that recording was the obvious next step. Sean tells me about being terrified, but how being immediately thrown in the deep end didn't give him time to overthink the process. So go check out the All Stars EP Tuesdays on Bandcamp. Follow them on all the socials at OV Stars. And if you happen to be in Asbury Park, New Jersey, stop by the Stone Pony and get one of Alice's Jello shots. Give us a follow at Performance ANX on the socials. If you aren't doing so already, rate and review us. Check out our YouTube channel and email the Performance Anxiety Pod at gmail.com with your thoughts. You can send support our way via ko fi.com slash performance anxiety or get merch at performanceanx.threadless.com. Now let's be like Pony and jump right into this episode's deep end on performance anxiety on the Pantheon Podcast Network. All right, cool. Um, all right, so I'm Alice Janice uh, of Stars of Stars Band on uh, most digital platforms. If you want to give us a follow, you are listening to Performance Anxiety. Um, go have a listen to our new EP called Tuesdays. What am I doing? <laughs> um, like okay, that. same thing. Um, hi. <laughs> okay, so. A big shout out to Homes Anxiety Podcast for having us on. It was a great time. I'm Sean Pony Heath from the band of Stars. And it would be amazing if you go and follow us on any platform by typing in of Stars band. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to have to fuck with that word. Get the worst word ever. It's, it's, it's fun. Really it's that's something. I don't know who came up with that one. Somebody who really really likes to snicker at people. They, know, they workshop that word. They, yeah. Someone was workshopping that at some point. They, and someone went, yes, dongle. They really if, did. If it were a moist dongle, that would oh be Oh my God, worse. that's too far. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't, that was my inside voice. I didn't mean to say that out loud. <laughs> so uh, what I like to do is just find out uh, to find out, I guess, get a little more insight on the new album is to find out how you got there. So I like to learn about your history, how you got into music in the first place for both of you. Because um, I know you, you both have quite different stories and love to find out how you got into music and how you two met and started creating music together. So each these questions, the first few that I'm going to ask you are basically for both of you. So... Um, okay. feel, feel free to just jump in and and answer. So, um, when did you guys first start getting into music? Uh, how old were you? Was there stuff playing in the house that was really capturing your attention? What what really got you into music in the very beginning? Um, I I think for me, I used to love to dance when I was younger, and. My dad was a camp director in this camp in upstate New York. I grew up in Hoboken. So there was this YMCA camp and they would have like dance parties at the camp. And, and I just was always out. And Pony can also say that I am still always up for a big dance party, but I did. 100%. Yeah. Well, so is Pony. Um, but I, 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 I think, uh, you know, initially music became a part of my life because I loved to dance to music so much and then you know as i got and this is when i was young like super young okay you know not not even double digits yet um and then and then when i got a little bit older um, i did also as a young girl study piano very briefly and i was terrible 
<laughs> um, Bonnie's never heard me attempt to play piano, I've and never I never heard her. And I never would. You're so blurry. And I never would. Um, <laughs> it's a ghost. This is my ghost. I oh, know I'm the it's ghost. Like we're doing this underwater. Um, yeah, <laughs> we could be underwater. <laughs> um, we do live by the ocean. Um, but then, uh, you know, as I got older, I started listening to more rock, and and because of my proximity to New York City, and also the fact that. I don't know if you knew of a club called Maxwell's, which was... I used to go to Maxwell's, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up a block away oh, wow. from Maxwell's. So as, you know, in my late teens and early 20s, I would go to Maxwell's all the time. Like, all the yeah. time. Like, I think I lived there. I don't... I mean, I slept <laughs> at my mom's house where I grew up, but I I think I mostly lived at Maxwell's. So I was exposed to a lot of different kinds of music. Yeah. And you know, just like, like going to clubs in New York city in the early late seventies and early eighties, like all of that kind of opened my eyes to what the possibilities were for me. And I think because I was very drawn to dance space was, was something that really spoke to me. Oh, okay. okay. Pony, what about you? What got you into it in the first to start with? So I lived about 72,000 gazillion miles away from Maxwell <laughs> in a beautiful country called South Africa. So I'm from the capital, Pretoria. Okay. And I grew up, so music is just always one of those things. I actually started only talking a lot later than I should have, never oh. stopped. But also, so <laughs> they... <laughs> Like expressing myself a lot of the time. Bless you, whoever is sneezing. Oh, that's my wife. Not... She's sneezing in, in, in another room. <laughs> well, bless her. Bless you. You, you, this is, a pony says, God bless you. Thank you. She says, thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, um, growing up is a way of expressing. And just naturally, I always was singing. And I grew up on a small holdings where my grandfather's um, plant nursery would be. It was, it was on there. So it was a business. Okay. And there was about 40 women working for him. And they were constantly, while they were working, they would sing together and harmonize. Even they weren't singing, standing next to each other. However far, they would just sing really loudly and they would sing together. Oh, wow. And then I would try and sing with them. It didn't work. <laughs> but then I would just pretend like I'm singing in French, looking at the flowers. And also <laughs> piano came to me. Wow. Um, my grandmother had a really big upright grand piano in her, we call it a fuorkamer, which means like the front room, which is the room that's like a museum. Oh, oh yeah. The room nobody goes into. Yeah. Yeah. You could die. But she would <laughs> let me play the piano there. And then my grandfather saw that I liked it and had an aptitude for it. So he bought me a piano when I was nine. And I started lessons on that and then kind of cheated my way through some exams because they would play the song a couple of times and then I would just learn it by ear and not read music. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I can't still, I can understand some theory, but I can't sight read. I can't write notation. Oh, wow. So that's my story. Yeah. That's pretty wild. So, so you were singing from an early age. Alice, what about you? Did you start, were you singing at all? You were dancing, but... Yeah, I was singing. I mean, I did. I, I skipped over the part where I was sort of a band nerd because I, I grew up in Hoboken and I don't think that any of us at that time growing up in those years in Hoboken were very nerdy. <laughs> it was still, Hoboken was still a very blue collar city and um, a lot of people were really more afraid of coming there. So Maxwell sort of was, you know, taking a brave step into a brand new world um, before it got completely overdeveloped and became condo land that it is today right um but yeah i did you know i played in a in the high school on the junior high school band and i sang with the chorus so i definitely had some exposure to singing and i also grew up in a family where my mom had two sisters and they grew up in a very german household um and they they would sing three-part harmony for the german club when they were little girls so <laughs> oh, wow. every holiday they would sing you know stille nacht they'd sing silent night wow. german and it was just really cute and um now that they're older it's even 
cuter and more hilarious because I, they, they can remember like half the words and everybody's <laughs> always off key because wine happens and uh, oh yeah my mom will kill me because i said that out loud to other people but it's pretty great <laughs> so yeah I, I grew up also with a lot of singing around me we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors this podcast is sponsored by better help Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is, therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work, not dealing well with the stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Try doing that in person. So join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. And a special offer to Performance Anxiety listeners, you can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash performance anxiety. That's betterhelp.com slash performance anxiety. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. Was there um, a moment when uh, you really thought that music was... Your calling, with that it, it was what you wanted to do for a vocation. I mean, for me, yes. I I have always written songs in my head from a very young age. I don't think that I knew when I was younger that it it was just always a part of me. Okay. So I don't know that I knew that I could do it, but at some point in my early you know, I don't know, maybe nineteen, twenty, twenty one, I realized that it was definitely something that I could pursue and that's around the time I started playing bass and was immediately in a band like the minute I picked up a bass I started playing with my friend Karen Cool um and we formed a band called Gut Bank yes and that That like immediately like immediately was in that band and and I you know I feel like almost within uh, you know a year we were you know, recording and playing live shows. And yes. it was kind of crazy how fast it happened. Um, and I, you know, a lot of that is uh, Steve Fallon um, and Bill Ryan helped to support us. And, you know, but I do feel like we were always ahead of our time. Like the kind of music that we were playing wasn't really starting to be played until like 10 years later. We definitely were always today. ahead of it. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was giving it a spin today again, and it's you're, you're absolutely right. It was definitely ahead of the curve. Yeah, so, which is, you know, that's a blessing and a curse, right? Like sometimes it hits, and uh, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> it's never hit for me. <laughs> but whatever. I'm still playing. Exactly. Still alive. Exactly. It's good. So, but Pony, what about you? Was there a, a time that it kind of, the switch kind of flipped and you knew this was what you want to do, or was it always there? I think that I've always been compelled to do it, but I think when I started understanding the emotional responses people were having to it and the impact that I could have in their lives and the fact that through creative work, you don't have to necessarily become a doctor to have impact in someone's world. And I think once I started feeling the way that I was feeling about needing to make work and that it it stood and sounded to me like the truth. And that's when I kind of was like, okay, so maybe this is what you're good at. 
And it still hasn't hit for me either. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was it like in South Africa at that time? I mean, were you gigging around or were you just playing on your no. own? No. So, so, okay, right now I'm all like, I, at one point when I was about 18, 19, early 20s, I um, kind of, I'd never rejected the piano, but it's not an easy thing that you can tour with no. or go play places. It's not like some rooms have pianos there already. Um, equipment there is incredibly expensive and you have to bring your own stuff, especially from then to now globalization happened and it's a little bit easier, right. but there also weren't a lot of venues. So I had this, <laughs> a rock band. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty wow. hardcore. Oh, nice. Yeah. We, we sang about sex. Whoa. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> no way. But we would put on like these, I know pretty hardcore. <laughs> and we would put on these, um, in the area I lived in, there's a lot of like small holdings and little farms. Um, so we would just build makeshift stages or like we had this one friend at a small holding where he, it was a venue, but it was not a venue. There was no back <laughs> You bring your own stuff. They give you a place where you could plug your stuff in and they had bathrooms. That was like the most sophisticated we've ba ever played. Bathrooms and an outlet. Okay. Yes. I was like, <laughs> I've made it. This is the big time. <laughs> yeah. But I remember playing on a stage that we actually... This guy, his father had a bunch of, like a mountain of old tires in the back. So we took the tires and we stacked them on top of each other. Everyone got shovels, filled them with soil and put old boards over it just so we had a little bit of stuff. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's And then totally there was one I weird bar. It's, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. This is the old country. And, um, like I'm saying, now there's more venues and stuff. And there was a couple of venues, but that was like more like super professional established bands. But yeah, with life was over when I was introduced to a smoke machine at one of those. I was like razzle dazzle. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I was enamored. You know, I'm the star now. <laughs> or a vampire. Oh, there you go. They, but I've, I've had one or two other South African artists on and I, I they have told me how difficult it is to play in that area. So it's, it is, it's also this, there's, there's very set markets over there where yes. you can. So if I, if I followed a specific formula, I could have probably been a pop star in Afrikaans with the right elements, but I chose not to okay. because it felt disintegrous. Uh, so I decided why not go through American immigration system? <laughs> 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 And, um, that's so easy, easy especially, yeah especially during yeah. the era you did it in yeah so wow yeah so that's what 23 i was like let's try and make it here and i was a little bit delusional <laughs> but 146 years later i'm on the brink of something being played on a radio hey. you know? <laughs> you're about to you're, you're in a podcast i mean that's pretty close i'm right? i'm on the performance anxiety podcast That's right. exactly yeah right on. yeah yeah and i was like here i was just used to smoke machines but now baby but we look like we're in a smoke machine we're in a too. smoke machine right now on this. <laughs> some kind of <laughs> vaseline like i don't know maybe it was some old 70s porn or something it, was it looks like on the, that on the uh for the first season of rupaul's drag race <laughs> when everything was soft salted i don't know if anyone sees that <laughs> but there we go I know, Alice, you, you've you moved on f when uh, you started, you are in Gut Bank. You moved on yeah. to a, a bunch of other bands, including Sex Pod, which is awesome. Thank Love you. That, that album. Thank you. That, oh. Yeah, I think that album's amazing also. Oh. I, I'm very, very proud of it. And I, I, I think it still holds up. And Oh, yeah. You know, there, there's times where I'm sad that it didn't go any further than it did, but you know, again, I think that we were like, what's the, they didn't know what to do with three women playing that kind of music. Uh, yeah. I can um, imagine. And the world just wasn't ready for it. And, yeah. and I, you know, I do think we were good enough or maybe even better than that. I, you know, it's hard to talk about your own music. And I think I can only say these things now because having had enough time, you know, a few decades since, since that, 
recording came out, I can actually look at it without judging it harshly and wishing I had done something better or I sang something differently. And now I can actually really listen to it and, and, and see, you know, the beauty and, and, and in some ways the, you know, not to say genius, but also the genius of it, like the, you know, that we were three women that, you know, were playing, you know, seriously playing music at that point. And yeah. I think writing some pretty great songs and some pretty heavy we had, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, you know, put on the gas kicks ass. Yeah. Yeah, I think it does too. I still think it does. And and every now and again, Karen and I get together in some form and we'll just play. Oh, awesome. Um, and we'll generally pull out, put on the gas and uh, sometimes go. Yeah, we, we've done it once or twice. I mean, not in the last few years, but we, we're, you know, we're due. I, I Karen was, was recently, you know, she's like, sex pod will never die. And I, and I do think that like, you know, it's something that, we enjoy doing from time to time. Um, sadly, we lost Tia a few years ago. Um, oh, I didn't even realize. So, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, she was an incredible drummer and we were really lucky to be able to work with her when we did. And then you end up getting the gig with Psychic TV. Yeah. <laughs> how, did that happen? How, did you get, how did you get that job? Uh, so that came ironically through this scene around sex pod where we were playing a lot of shows in Manhattan on the East side, on the West side, on the lower East side, we became friends with a lot of different bands. Um, one of them was the toilet boys, Eddie from who was in the toilet boys was really good friends with lady J who was Genesis is the wife of Genesis, yeah. lady J, but you know, Jackie or J. I call her. Um, she liked a necklace. I'm also a jeweler. So she liked a necklace that he was making. And so I was introduced to make a necklace and then, you know, was sort of put forward that maybe I would play bass <laughs> if Psychic TV were to reform in America. <laughs> and it was, it really was one thing that led to another. And I was friends with, with Jen and Jay for, you know, most more with Jen, like we would meet and you know, go have lunch at Odessa in the, in the East village together and, you know, have really incredible conversations. And I would make jewelry for her and for Jay. And, um, at one point we were, I remember walking down St. Mark's place and, uh, I think my boyfriend worked at a tattoo shop there. And so, you know, maybe Jen was walking me back over. So I, and Jen was talking about, you know, oh, when we start playing, shows and I was like Jen you haven't you've never even heard me play what do you mean when we start playing shows and she's just like oh no no you, you'll be playing you know you, you'll be playing shows with us so and then that's and that's you know obviously there was an audition but it was you know Genesis wasn't really in charge of that part and and that the rest is history I played uh, the choral room and I don't remember if it was 2003 or 2004 but that was our first show and wow. I played until the very end so almost um, 20 and, years Almost two, yeah, two decades. That's amazing, and I didn't yeah. really even get into psychic TV. I, I I was I was familiar with with Jen and through Throbbing Gristle, and industrial stuff wasn't really what I was into back when it was all new, and so yeah. I didn't even really listen to psychic TV until recently, and I didn't realize how psychedelic the last albums were. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I, thank I was, you. I was listening to um, uh, Looking for You from Alienist.
is an incredible song. Thank you. Oh yeah, we did God. get very psychedelic and and toward, you know, especially the last few years, the last few good years that Jen was having. She was always just really grateful. There were moments where she would, you know, and, and on more than one occasion would just say, this is, this is the band I've always wanted to have. She's always wanted this like uber psychedelic band with members who could kind of facilitate that for her. Everybody in the band held down their end of it. And everybody was really good at being um, fluid, which I think was important because we could just, Jen was, you know, Jen could be a trickster and, and would, <laughs> would sometimes just extend it or sing it differently than it was, you know, five times before that. And we're all trying to like, you know, sometimes we would call it dropping the baby, right? Like just throw the baby and somebody's got to catch the baby, right? Like, so we like, they don't drop the baby. You know? yeah. like, so every, somebody has to jump in and catch it so that wow. we can steer it around. So it became this like, you know, th this is stuff that terrifies Pony. Yes. Um, but, but Please don't throw the baby. <laughs> don't throw the baby, <laughs> Pony. <laughs> No, I'm not a good judge. But, uh, yeah, it, I mean, you do really have to be in tune. And I think at that point in our careers after playing together, you know, the final version of the band was uh, Jeff and Eddie and myself. And then John was a little bit later on. But, you know, certainly Jeff and Eddie and I had been playing together for probably 10 years at that point. So oh wow, anybody who plays together for that long, like, you, you just have this, like, it becomes an organism that breathes by itself in some ways, you know, and obviously yeah. with Genesis, you know, with Genesis as the, the head, uh, I don't know, conductor or prima donna <laughs> or whatever she <laughs> prima, <laughs> is, prima conductor, the ballerina of it all. But yeah. I mean, it, honestly, like I'm, I'm laughing about it, but I, 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 it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life to be able to play in that band and I felt really honored and I'm still incredibly grateful to have had those experiences because I know that a lot of people don't get to do that and and it's another situation you know where like we've never I've never had that fortune or fame or you know I've always had to have other jobs to be able to keep food on the table and make ends yeah. meet but I wouldn't you know what's success but right? you had smoke machines we did have smoke machines and projections and we did have projections <laughs> we never had fireworks though uh, it's, not it's not too late it's not it's not you're right I'm still alive <laughs> <laughs> so pony when you got over here from south africa did you just jump into performing i think i read no, you ended up in I new york a, right I have a little bit of an interesting story. <laughs> a little bit of one, okay. okay. Little bit. So when I came to so <laughs> when I came to America, I was married. I get my psychiatrist out. Um, yeah, get your psychiatrist. I'm going to lay down for this one. <laughs> um, yeah. I was, I was... We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about socks for a second. Why not? It's a music podcast. But I tried a pair of socks from Boldfoot and loved them. I've only worn them once because my kids have stolen them. So in my household, that's the best endorsement I can give. And I guess it's fitting because the design I chose was jailbait. Wait, jailbird. The design I chose was jailbird. I might keep that in. The socks are 100% American made and 5% of all proceeds go to veteran charities. It makes sense seeing that Boldfoot is a family and veteran owned company. They have a huge variety of styles. So check out boldfoot.com and buy some of the best socks you've ever slapped on your feet and help veterans while you're at it. That's boldfoot.com. And he was married to my first husband and he um, it was here on diplomatic mission. And when we got here, I wasn't allowed to work or anything. So I kind of played the role of dutiful housewife you had a title i had a, I had a title but i can't go into that <laughs> <laughs> you sure so i would i would it, it's not i wasn't a, a kept husband but i was kept but i had to earn everything it was a very toxic relationship and anyway when the point came for me to we were going to establish him in his career and then we did that a couple of years into it i was still writing and still 
playing one or two like shows. I can't remember what it was called. I think it's the 169 bar. It used to be called the Bloody Bucket. So, you know, oh, pretty wow. much stuff. Like, <laughs> oh, this is on Bacon Street. Yeah. yeah no, I have actually I, heard it, the Bloody Bucket. It's sitting out there from time to time. Yeah, I once in a while played there, uh, but it's not, it was nothing serious. And okay. I used to go on Mondays, they had a Cafe Vivaldi who closed right now. They had an open mic night where you could go and like play. And that was kind of the things I was, if this is going to sound sad, the kind of things I was allowed to do. And then when that marriage dissolved, it was kind of going through the immigration process and having to do other work to survive and not being able to hyper-focus on playing out necessarily or recording. But I never stopped writing ever. So that's been like the only constant, that and yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going through some of the songs, it sounds like the toxic relationship definitely informed some of your writing. And I'm looking yeah. right at the song, I Know You're Cheating On Me. That just caught me on a left field. Yes, you did. Yeah. You just, I've never seen you speechless before. You just knocked me off kilter. I feel seen. Um, but That's so, what I'm here for. So the thing is, I, the thing that I said earlier about the emotional responses and how other people can find value in it. And I'm not saying you have to experience trauma to be able to write or create beautiful work. I'm just saying that in my life, there's been a lot of trauma as an Alice is. And I think that's where we meet. Okay. And it's always informed my writing because there's been trauma since a child. And I think it's also a form of self healing, but also taking others to a space when they hear it, where they can feel that they're not alone or that they might find healing through it. And I think I met Alice at a hard time for her. And she was going through the thick of it. But I also think that when people go through trauma, they have much more compassion and empathy for others. And they're able to recognize, they're able to recognize the same thing in others. And I think that's also why we clicked immediately when we met, because we didn't meet in a capacity of like, oh, we're two musicians meeting somewhere. A brother actually said to me, hey, you should meet my sister. You know, she she plays in a little band. Um, You know, she makes little music. Little music, <laughs> you know, you, you should talk with a little bass, with a little bass, doing little things, very cute. And um, I said, okay, cool, sure, because everyone just wants a pianist for their sister, you know, because everyone's sister's a star. Um, <laughs> but then I, and I met her and we just immediately, there was like, an, I think an, an, on an energy level or a subconscious thing, there was just a recognition of this is going to be something wonderful. So it didn't start as a collaborative or a creative process. It started as friends. Wow. And then we're like, Hey, you've got a guitar. I've got a guitar. Actually, no, we started with, you've got a bass. <laughs> I've got a piano. Let's make cute musics and little cutie cutes together. <laughs> and then never use the bass and the piano again. Cause the piano is way too heavy. The bass was like, it was, we're like, we have guitars. Let's just play guitars. There you go. We're not the most proficient. Oh, we're terrible guitar players. We suck. <laughs> but that's where Jeff Burner comes in. So uh, Jeff Burner does not suck at playing guitar no. or at producing. So, But if you can write a song with all the chords that Bob Dylan knows. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We can do a thing and we did. I wanted to ask you a couple questions, Alice. And, you know, we don't need to go too deep into, into this, but your first album. 
Sticks and Bones. What made you decide to go and, and make your own album instead of playing with, you know, continuing to play with Psychic TV? I mean, you were still playing with them, obviously, but yeah. you were you decided to just go out on your own for an album and, and write your own songs. Kitchen and Queens Long-legged and me Cigarettes And a cup of tea I think uh, one of the things that happened for me is that I, I, I was going through loss. I had lost my very close girlfriend, Lady J, and I lost my dad not long after that. And then I lost, you know, there were some other losses and um, which I don't want to get too deeply into. Um, and I felt like I needed to write through it. And that's something that I do. I don't always record it. Okay. Um, but this time I decided that I just, I would, I would just record it. I would do something different. Genesis used to have this patch that she wore on her jacket and it just said change. Um, and it's something that I've, I've brought up with Pony before. Like, I, I just feel like, I like the challenge. I like to be able to change things and do different things because I don't fit in one box as a musician. I can play different ways. I can play different instruments. I can write on different instruments. And that just, it, at that time, it felt like something that I wanted to do. I didn't know that I was going to put a band together and I eventually did. And then my son became the bass player. Um, and unfortunately, right around the time that it was to be well, we were going to release it. I, I, my son dropped his body. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of, I didn't spin out of control. I kind of got back into control. And uh, at some point I went back into the studio and recorded one last song, which is You Are the Sun as a tribute to my son. You are the sun. Are done. Our hearts now beat as one. Um, it's still hard to talk about this, but I, you know, I just felt that it had to come out. So I released it in uh, 2014. And I think it brought my relationship with Genesis came to a different place after losing my son. Cause Jen, you know, obviously I also lost Jay, but Genesis lost their wife. Right. Um, and it, like, she and I were both going through this, like, very complicated losses together. And I think a lot of the music that was written by Psychic TV from probably 2010 on, you know, you can you can hear the the loss that that both of us were going through because obviously I'm writing bass parts and Jen is writing lyrics, and we did become very very close uh, during that time because we. I think we both understood the the complexity of grief. So this is the first project outside of Psychic TV that you've done since Sticks and Bones. What made this feel right for you? What, how did Of Stars get started as an actual recording project instead of just the two of you hanging out, just playing music together? I think the pandemic happened. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I had, way too much, I had way too much time to think about shit. And at one point, like 2021 in January, yeah. I just was like, screw it. Let's just record. We have a, we have a lot of material. So much. So oh, nice. Going through that. Yeah. But wait, there's more. <laughs> um, so we also, isn't it? I think the way, so she said, I'm like, yeah, cool, fine, great. She's like, no, we're recording. Put on your big boy pants. We're recording now. Pick some songs. Just pick some songs that you want to pick. And I think that we both wrote a list or something. And they kind of correlated, not maybe in the same. Like, well, originally, it was going to be single. Yeah. So we picked the two, the two songs. Were first, easy, and, and then the next three were a little bit. No, no. 
we pretty much picked the same three songs. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then we recorded the EP and it turned out like some way subconsciously, there is a very strong narrative through the way these songs are set up. And it's not just sad, 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 sad. sad. Right. It's kind of an introduction about like, okay, that, Okay, I don't know where we are, but I do know we're born of stars. That's hopeful. Yes. And where it starts with that, and then you go through the dell, and then you just start walking back up the mountain again, where it's it goes back to the hopeful place, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, once we decided we we're gonna record, it was once again a very organic, natural thing. There wasn't any like it wasn't overtly complicated. And then we let go and let Jeff on production and the man, I don't know what deal he struck with the devil, <laughs> but the man can do some stuff, you know? Yeah. I've heard he's got some pretty unorthodox techniques. <laughs> what, so what was he doing? I mean, I've, I've heard that he uses interesting instruments and some really odd recording techniques to get the sounds that he's, he wants Did did you guys experience Anything like that? And what can you tell me about the recording process? I have worked with Jeff a lot yeah. <laughs> because Jeff was the guitar player in Psychic TV. And uh, the, the studio we recorded at Studio G in Brooklyn is the last studio that I recorded with Psychic TV. in. so I felt very much at home. I think for Pony, it was a little bit more terrifying because it, it wasn't excruciatingly <laughs> terrifying. Um, but, you know, so for me, I was going home and I trusted everybody. I I had already worked with everybody. I was going into someone else's home. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think because, you know, Jeff and I did come from this very psychedelic place where we were able to be super experimental with Genesis. And I think, you know, Jeff was able to use some of those techniques that, that, that he had maybe honed in on some of it with psychic TV, but also he's a brilliant producer. He's been working with tons and tons of bands and he's just always so busy. I, you know, I have, a, I'm actually, we're having a zoom meeting tomorrow oh. just our, as friends with our, our, you know, one of our people that we used to work with in Europe just so that we can all get together and chat for a while. Oh, nice. Um, Watching him work though. I think it's not just the fact that he's technically incredibly proficient, I think he's some sort of savant where he just naturally goes into this mode where he just starts pulling out stuff. And it's not tedious to watch him work. It's fascinating because he kind of just reaches for exactly the right thing that he needs to make the sound. Oh, so he used, and the ones I think of stars when he does that sick guitar solo, yeah. um, he uses something super like seven or eight pedals. Oh, wow. It's, it's yeah, I might be exaggerating a little, <laughs> but it's a lot of pedals for one guitar sound. And he uses stuff that some of the instruments um, on the record are actually novelty instruments, like an octagon, where it's a, basically a keyboard, but it works, it works with light. Oh, wow. So to get the sound, there's a whole <laughs> system and you put like this disc in, the disc has holes that light go through to produce sounds. Oh. And he's like, yeah, I've got two of those. Let's just use one of them. I've got two and of like, those. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. I mean, there were obviously parameters. We, Tony and I knew basically what we wanted things to sound like, right? Like, yeah. Like the, 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 the structure and the song was there. And then yeah, the song and the structure. And also we would tell him like what we feel in the song, not necessarily explain it, mm -hmm. but like the one was like, can we have a little bit of country in there? And he says, okay, cool. Well, I was going to put a slide guitar in there anyway, oh, or a lap steel guitar. Better things. And you're like, okay, so you see me, Jeff Burner. Well played. <laughs> well, 
that's better things, right? That that's a beautiful yeah. thing. Storm has blown all the leaves from the trees as I'm walking down the street I used to live. There's a dog outside. But I don't know his name And he doesn't know mine So it's all just the same Thank you. Yeah, that's one of the last ones we wrote. Long, yeah. It that might was, be the last one we wrote, oh. we wrote. And ironically, it made it... Well, we're working on a new one, but I, I feel like we're going in a little bit of a different direction. Okay. I think, you know, going through, going through a pandemic together also, not together, like we don't live together, but we, we live so close that, okay. that we, we were getting together through most yeah. of the pandemic, maybe not in the very beginning. I also, you know, Genesis dropped her body uh, like right as everything was shutting down. Yeah, I remember. In March. She, she dropped her body on March 14th. And then, you know, I came home and I just shut my doors because, you you know, we weren't supposed to see anybody. And, yeah. I, and I had gone to a funeral and people had been sick. And I had been at a funeral the week before and people had gotten sick. So I was terrified to be around anybody because nobody knew anything, right? We were all like, it's global pandemic and it's, it's run for the hills. Like, you know, nobody really understood what it was yet. Yep. Um, so I came home and I shut the doors and Tony was probably one of the first people that I yeah. spent any time with. And we were both very careful. I, I work, I have a small jewelry company, so I work from home making jewelry alone and you know pony was working but restaurants weren't really open yet we weren't so. open it wasn't like to the because there wasn't sit down or any of those things but precautions were taken and we always we kind of made the decision that we both need to remain working on tuesdays for our own sanity as well because i still and we stayed in each other's pod and um, like the germ, but I sound like a bunch of whales. Didn't they have changed? <laughs> oh this is this is our. I call it our quarantine. Our quarantine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. She's a creative genius. Um, <laughs> yeah. Huzzah. Huzzah. But it kept our sanity intact. Well, if that's what you call this, <laughs> <laughs> such as it is, I, I really enjoyed the EP and it. The first track of Stars and Better Things, there's what I really enjoy is the, the contrast. There's a rawness to the vocals that kind of contrasts with like the dreaminess of the music. It's very the music is a little I, I don't say soft, I maybe, maybe light, but the, the vocals an ethereal quality. Yeah, thank you. Thank there you. Go. But there, there's you. there's a rawness to the vocals that contrasts with it. And 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 then like in, in of stars that guitar solo going through it at the end. It's just there's so many things that contrast but work together so well. It's really a great listen, both of those songs in particular. Thank you. I think one of my favorites is Dear Eyes. Uh, so good. Oh, yeah, I, we love that. One, I so. love Dear Eyes. That is such a beautiful <laughs> song. like kind of esoteric kind of one more like it's a little darker than the others but rhythmically it also has a different feel because i think pony pony came up with this idea that we would have this like sort of percussive thing um which really comes from pony's heritage i think in a lot yeah, of yeah from where i'm from like uh, obviously like that kind of beats and tribal beats and stuff mm -hmm. and we wanted to in some way not tilt a hat, like tip a hat to it and just be like, hey, <laughs> we see you. Pay a slight <laughs> homage. 
Yeah. <laughs> and we had, you know, we had this incredible drummer. We had uh, Randy Schrager oh come in God. and play drums on those uh, Better Things and Dear Eyes, Eyes and yeah. Beautiful. Um, so, and Randy has played on tour with Psychic TV at one point, but also um, has been playing with Jesse Malin pretty regularly and with had played with the Scissor Sisters. So he's a really skilled adept drummer he's done a lot of session work and he's also a really good friend so um i felt really lucky that we got him in on those songs and it really was again it was like a family project in a lot of ways yeah the only person in this whole endeavor on this record that i had met prior was um mr weingarten and um yeah i've hung out with him because we played alice did a show at danny clinch pre-pandemic Mm-hmm. And he played with us and with Zeph as well, Emilia. So I walked in there also very intimidated because these are seasoned professionals. They all worked together before. This is a beautiful studio. The one soundboard we used was used on, um, interestingly enough, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> oh, wow. The BGs actually recorded the soundtrack on that. <laughs> and then also... I was like, so now once again, I had to put on my big boy pants and I'm intimidated because imposter syndrome. And originally the plan was, this is when we first recorded the two, that was just going to be two sing- the two songs for the single. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time I'm walking into the studio. We had like a five minute rehearsal the previous day. And then we were like, okay, Alice. And I'm like, Alice, cool. You go first. Yeah. I'll get situated. Yeah. And everyone's fine with this plan. Everyone. Then Jeff sets up and he's like, pony you up. And I think that also might have been one of his tactics. Uh, so I couldn't overthink it. It was just, it was just go time. Yeah. It was go time. I'm going to jump in though for a minute. This was uh, crying time. We recorded first. Mm-hmm. And Pony got into the vocal booth and nailed those parts. Like n- literally nailed them to the point that we, John and Jeff and I were all looking at each other like, what is happening right now? Like literally one take. We made him sing two more times, but we all knew that he had the song in one take and I literally had goosebumps because he, I mean, it was just like, if you listen to that song and you hear the the range that he's going to, and like to think of, you know, there, there were no punch-ins. Really? Just nailed that. Wow. It's amazing what nerves, <laughs> how nerves can serve you. Yeah, they sure can. Maybe it's, maybe it's that thing about going through the immigration system. You go into fight or flight mode. You know, <laughs> <laughs> see that that served you well. Yes, your immigration yes. trial served you well. <laughs> yes, see, it informs the way I work. Hey. No. <laughs> so you mentioned that you've got a bunch of other songs and you're working on some more. Is so there is a plan for maybe a full length album coming out sometimes. I mean, I'm future? I'm out of money at this point. <laughs> so if anybody wants to yeah. come and be our Patreon, uh, that would be great. Um, I. I hope that we can sell some of these. We're going to, we actually will put this out on vinyl as I'm sure you're very aware the backup of vinyl at this point. We ordered our vinyl in November. I don't know when we're going to see it. It looks like maybe September, October. Wow. Um, and hopefully we'll have a pre-sale at some point. So, uh, but you know, once like if, uh, yes, I would love to go back into the studio. I just, uh, I don't know when I can make that happen. Okay. Um, but you know, if, Somebody wants to help support us. We will take it. There you go. Uh, yes. I'm more than willing to get married again. And again. <laughs> and again. I am not. But she is not. But I am obviously a sucker for punishment. He's younger than I am. So you can take one for the team. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I am married, but I can marry again. It's fine. <laughs> I hope your husband's not listening currently. I, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> So it looks like you guys have a few live dates planned. Are you going to be doing just the two of you, or is it going to be an actual of a full band with the, or do you have to pare down the songs and arrange them for uh, either the band or the duo? So for the Danny Clinch Gallery show, it's sort of a little celebration of our release. Um, Pony and I are both going to play solo. Yeah, and then we're going to play acoustic of stars like we do in our living room um the danny clinch gallery is is kind of like a little living room room. it's amazing so people are so lovely they really are they're incredible danny and maria and tina like and and just amazing people um 
So we're gonna do a, an acoustic version. Yeah, like an intimate, an intimate yeah. little in my living room set. You know? Yeah, sort of a little glimpse. I'm probably I am planning to play with the two guys that I was playing with on Sticks and Bones, okay. minus my son, obviously. And I and I'm going to do it without bass that day, which I'm actually really excited about doing because I I haven't played with them in a really long time. So that's sort of meaningful for me. Um, and then when we do the Pioneer Works show, which is June 30th, we're going to do that with a full band. Um, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Wow. And we're going to do a tiny little nod to Psychic TV. So there'll be a little bit of a Psychic TV set toward the end. Um, this The Pioneer Works show is uh, during an art show called, oh God. Why can't we remember this? I don't know. Anyway, it's going to be so cool. <laughs> this is a, um, we are about one or something like that. Um, but it's a, it's a androgyny show of uh, Genesis and Lady J's work. Okay. Um, so, you know, I feel honored that we were asked to, to be a part of that gig. Um, so we'll do, a, you know, a short Upstars set with Jeff Berner and possibly John Weingarten. Oh, wow. uh, Richard Sleets, uh, Lino is going to join us on drums. So, uh, you know, we definitely are going to have I think Emilio Zeff China will be able to come and play either bass or he plays with uh, Peter Murphy and a million other bands. But wow. so I, I think, you know, we have a lot of work to get to that gig at this point because we definitely haven't played as a full band yet. But I think it's going to be pretty great. Yeah, I'm not intimidated at all. <laughs> I can tell. I can see it on your face. <laughs> It's yeah, I'm not nervous. <laughs> I'm not nervous. But... And we even we will have visuals though. No smoke yeah, machine, but... but we're gonna have visuals for oh that my set. God. So... My rider says smoke machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got. No, we're gonna have visuals. What's the guy's name? Sam Zimmerman, who was the uh, who did our visuals for Psychic TV, is gonna join us for that gig as well. Oh, cool. So are you guys hoping to do any more dates after that or is just those few dates is, is enough? <laughs> let's see. Let's see where this pandemic goes. I mean, I'm reluctant to book a bunch of shows. I have other friends who are doing it, but I feel like every time my friends go out on a tour, it ends up getting canceled and they end up coming back. So oh, wow. I, I haven't. Yeah. We're just getting, we're at the wait and see point. Okay. We're going to do these couple of gigs and see how the world feels and, and then take it from there. That's fair. In the meantime, you know, we still pretty much get together every Tuesday. Yeah. It's a standing thing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, and Alice, are you still creating your jewelry? Is that still ongoing? I do. Oh, wow. yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I make a living. So I have a small web shop. Uh, it's Love Jesse Designs. Um, and I do Genesis used to say I was the official jeweler of Psychic TV, but I, I do some Psychic TV related jewelry, like Psychic Cross jewelry, but I also do a lot of other um, stuff. And I, you know, I do occasion, like occasional bespoke engagement rings and that sort of thing. Oh, wow. Um, oh, nice. And then in the summer, I work at the Stone Pony. Oh, for, man. Which is really, really, really fun. And it's the only thing that's ever made me feel cool. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I used to do Stone Pony all the time. I don't know what it is, but when I when I'm like, I oh, work here, I feel so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of cool. I'm envious. Yeah. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing ever. I make Jello shots when nobody's there for the shows. <laughs> so I literally work. So I work in a room. I work in a studio by myself making jewelry, and then I work at the Stone Pony relatively by myself making jello shots but then they do allow me to go into the public and sell merch outside from from time to time so oh there you go uh, <laughs> i do like it and i get to see live shows which is really pretty great that's pretty awesome that and is everyone's awesome. usually happy so yeah nice to be around happy hey, you know when the world is so full of sad and i don't know like we're that's what music does yeah yeah absolutely it uplifts so, Genesis always wanted to spread love. Like Jen always felt like love was the the answer to everything. That love yeah. would cure wars and love would cure, you know, ailments and and heartache and you know, and and I always felt like music is love. You're right. Yes. Yeah. So, Pony, what else do you have in store for the upcoming year besides the couple shows and writing on Tuesdays? Oh, I well. I'm trying to strategize how I'm going to go about finishing up some, I have some songs that are like half recorded. 
Okay. So I'm just going to figure out how I want to tie them up and All then right. see where I want to go with them. Cause obviously vinyl's not in the cards right now, but maybe just have a digital release at some point. And yeah, that's, that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, this has been awesome. I've really enjoyed this. I've, I've loved listening to the EP. It's so, it, it's beautiful. Where can people order it? And I guess for now it's just going to be digital, but how can they keep track of, of vinyl and keep track of you guys? You can follow of stories band, uh, on Bandcamp and SoundCloud and uh, Instagram. Instagram and Facebook and, yeah. uh, you know, but most of the digital platforms, you know, we have a YouTube channel now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. we, we haven't populated very much of anything because we, you know, we're waiting to release before we put a lot of stuff out there, but, but yeah, you can follow of stories band at, any of those locations and you know we try to keep people posted we've been a little bit quiet on our instagram and facebook pages lately yeah. because we you know we're waiting for the big hurrah gearing up <laughs> to go. but yeah but yeah so you can you know you can obviously listen to it digitally um for free or you can download it and give us a little bit of money so that we can make some more music and um make that full length cool. that's yes. all you know, at some point we'll do t-shirts and we've got some stickers and oh, cool. we'll get some merch. Again. Um, yeah. We're lucky. You know, we've, we've got some really talented friends around us. We really do. For sure. It's been a pleasure talking with both of you and meeting you. Thank you guys so much for spending so much time with me. I've kept you for a while. It's been wonderful getting to know you guys. Thank you. Same you. to you. Thank and you very nice much. You, Mark. you know, it's Tuesday. Go, you can write a song. <laughs> <laughs> You're not my real dad. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Love and the whole is not working. Traveled down before Our souls have gotten so damn dirty As we left ourselves bleeding on 